If you've ever tried to design a page like this, but it ended up looking like this, I've got some tips that should be a big help. Hi there, I'm Christine with Thrive Themes. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I invite you to do so, and be sure to ring the bell to be notified when we publish new videos. So if you ever tried to create a page for your website from scratch or make adjustments to a template only to find that it looks terrible or that it's a frustrating experience, then I think this video is going to help. We're going to be going over how to use padding and margins in Thrive Architect. We'll be touching on the difference between absolute and relative units and how that impacts your page layout. And we'll be going over negative margin numbers and how you can use them to build more creative looking layouts. So here is an example of what we're going to be creating today. You might see sections like these, for example, on lead generation pages, sales pages, or silo pages. So in the top section, we have some text here in a box, and that box is inside of a background section. Down below it, we have an image that breaks this border here and is overlapping the background of the following section. All right, so let's dive right in. So I've got a blank page here in Thrive Architect. Let's start by adding a background section to the page. So I'll go to the Add Element button and I'll go to the background section and I'll click and drag that into place. Now I'm going to add an image to my background section. So I'm going to go to the Background Style tab and then I'll click this button to add an image. Let's choose this one. Next, let's add a content box. So this content box is going to give us the white box that is on top of the image. So I'll go to the Add Element button and I'll click and drag the content box element into place. And then I'll go to the Background Style tab and I will add a solid color. And I'll make the opacity somewhere around 94 to 95% because I do want the background image to show through just a little bit. So now let's type in some text inside this box. All right, so if at this point your section might have a large space underneath the white box, it's because of the minimum height for this background section. So make sure that background section is highlighted in the breadcrumbs, then go to the main options tab, and then you can adjust the section minimum height. I'm gonna go ahead and make that one pixel just to make sure that we don't have any of that space. Okay, so if I click on the text element, you'll see in the breadcrumbs that we have a text element, which is inside of a content box, which is inside of a background section, which is on a page. And everything that is listed here in the breadcrumbs, except for the page, has its own margin and padding settings. So let's just start playing with the margins and padding so you can see what the difference is. I'll select the content box element, which is our white box, and then I'll go down to the layout and position tab. So margin refers to the spacing just to the outside of a container. In this diagram here, margin settings are the gray settings, which will actually turn green when I add a margin specification. So let's add, for example, a 60 pixel margin to the top of the white content box. As you can see, that added some space just to the outside top edge of the white content box. Now let's reset this to zero again. And the inside set of numbers here, the blue numbers, are the padding settings. Padding will add some space to the inside of a container. So let's set the inside top padding to be 60 pixels. And you can see that added some space to the inside top edge of the white content box. So there's now a little more space between the top edge of that content box and the text that's inside of it. All right, so let's reset that. Now what's really nice about the margin and padding settings is there's an easy way to set the margins and padding for all four sides of your container. So if you click on this little lock icon here, you'll see that it closes the lock and then you can adjust the margins and padding for all four sides at once. So let's take another look at what we want to create. So we will need to add some space between the outer edge of this background section and the white content box. To do that, we have two choices. So choice A, we can add some padding to the inside of the background section. So let's select the background section using the breadcrumbs. 
And then let's lock the margin and padding settings and let's add a 60 pixel padding all around. All right, so that's one way to do it. Let's reset this. And the second way you can do this is to add margins to the outside of the content box. So let's select the content box using the breadcrumbs. Let's lock these settings and let's add a 60 pixel margin all around. All right, so there we go. It's the exact same look. You can do whichever one best suits your layout. Next, let's go ahead and make this text look a little nicer. So let's center this text and let's make this look a little bit bigger. All right, so let's take a look at the example again and we'll need to add a little bit of space between the text and the outside edge of the white content box. So again, there's two different ways to do that. I can either add padding to the content box or I can add a margin to the text element. I'll go ahead and use the content box. So I'll select the content box from the breadcrumbs and let's go ahead and let's lock the lock icon and then I'll add maybe an 80 pixel padding. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Let's see how it looks on tablets. Looks pretty good again. And let's see how it looks on mobile devices. Yeah, it doesn't look so good, right? Now, if we go back to the desktop mode, let's talk about units. So if I click on this PX here, you'll see that you actually have three different choices for units. So you have pixels, you have M and you have percentage. So pixels are an absolute unit. What that means is no matter what the viewport size is, when you specify a 60 pixel margin, that's going to stay 60 pixels on all screen sizes, unless you make further specifications to the tablet mode and the mobile phone mode. Percentage is a relative unit. So that means if I specify a 10% margin, the actual displayed width of the margin will change depending on the viewport size. And so the easiest way for me to show you is with an example. So this content box has a 60 pixel margin all around it. And this content box has a 5.56% margin all around it. Now they might look the same now, but let's see what happens when I shrink the viewport. All right, so as you can see, the 60 pixel margin stayed 60 pixels, even though it's in a smaller viewport. And that had a bigger effect on our content than the percent example below it. The percent example scaled with the size of the viewport. So as a result, the actual margin decreased by quite a bit. It's still at 5.56% of the viewport, but because the viewport shrank, so did the margin. So which one should you use? Well, it's really up to you, whichever best suits your layout. But I would definitely recommend checking to make sure that your page looks good on tablets and mobile devices prior to publishing. So going back to our demo, it looks good on desktop. It looks okay on tablet, but on mobile phones, it really doesn't look very good at all. So let's go back to the desktop view and let's switch our units to percentage. And that didn't actually change the desktop view at all, but let's take a look at tablet. It still looks okay on tablet and on mobile phones, it looks a lot better. I should mention that customizations generally cascade down through the screen sizes, but not up. So any customizations made in desktop mode will affect the tablet and mobile phone screen sizes as well. Customizations made in the tablet mode will affect the tablet and mobile phone screen sizes, but not the desktop mode. And customizations made to the mobile phone mode will only affect the mobile phone mode. Now there's one unit we haven't talked about yet, and that is the M unit. So M is a unit that comes from the type setting world. In Thrive Architect, what you need to know is that if you use M, it will behave just like pixels. The last thing I'd like to cover in this video is negative margins. Understanding how to use negative margins will open up your creativity so that you can start creating layouts like this one, where the image overlaps the background section below it. This is a nice graphical technique because it leads the eye toward the next section and it keeps people scrolling. So let's go ahead and let's set this up. Let's start by adding a background section to this page. And then let's add an image inside of that background section. 
I'll choose this image. And let's make this image just a bit smaller. And let's center this on the page. And let's add an 80 pixel margin to the top. All right, so next let's add another background section below this. And let's give this background section a color. And next let's add some text inside of this background section. All right, so to make this image overlap with the background section below it, let's select this image and let's decrease the bottom margin. So I'll go to layout and position. And for the bottom margin, I'll just make that minus 50. And so as you can see, that did pull up the background section upward, but it also pulled up the text that's inside of that background section. So now let's increase the top padding of this background section. I'll select the background section in the breadcrumbs and let's make this top padding 80 pixels and let's also make the left and right padding 80 pixels. All right, so this looks pretty good on desktop. Let's see what it looks like on tablets. That looks pretty good up here. Let's also add a little bit of bottom padding. That looks a little bit better. Let's see what it looks like on mobile phones. All right, so we do need to make an adjustment here. First thing I would do is probably make this image just a bit bigger. And that actually seemed to fix the issue. Now, if you need to, you can also make some adjustments to the margins and padding. So that was how to use padding and margins in Thrive Architect. And you can see how small, quick adjustments can actually make a huge impact on the layout of your page. I hope that this was helpful, and I hope that with this knowledge, you'll be able to create the layouts that you want to create. You can get Thrive Architect and the rest of our conversion-focused tools when you purchase Thrive Suite. Click the link below to learn more. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.